This is an old door that I had painted a while back and it needed a new outfit for our outside area. So here's a little tutorial on how I did everything. <laughs> I cleaned thoroughly and also sanded the door first and then gave it a first base coat. I just used some off-white paint that I had in my stash. No matter what brand it is, it's going to be covered anyway, so no need to have something really expensive. I gave it this base coat first and the paint was quite thick. As I work in Malta with the humidity and the heat, the paint gets thick very quickly as soon as you open the can, so I didn't have to add any texture additive. You might want to, depending where you live, put texture additive to get that um, paint, that thickened paint or uh, texture if you would like that. I used paint, brushes and a spatula and the spatula also helped me create thicker areas. Go in which way you want. Do crisscross, just don't do smooth because for me at least if I want my colour layers to get into those nooks and crannies well then I will have thicker areas and textured areas. I knew that I was going to put an image on the upper part of the door so I did put texture, I did put thickened paint but not as much as on the rest of the door. Just keep going the exact same way on the lower side of the door. Just apply with a spatula, paintbrush whatever you have on hand and apply as much texture as you would like or as little texture as you would like. Here I'm just smoothing out a bit the big blobs and also if you don't want to have high peaks just take a flat brush or hold your brush at least in a flatter angle and go very, very lightly over it to smoothen out those peaks that you've created by dabbing on your paint. For the decoupage, I use a top coat as glue. You could use any glue medium that you're comfortable with. It's really, it's a very, it's a preference that you have. Decide where your print wants to go and then start applying the top coat. Keep saran wrap um, handy and also a soft brush so you can smooth out uh, the wrinkles. Very important, do work in sections. And now let the image dry completely before continuing the next step. Now it's about creating texture around the image and for that you'd need this joint plaster tape. It's sticky on one side so I just cut out a few pieces and put them on the door. Just wherever you think it's, it would look nice, just put them down, afterwards you can take it off again.
that joint plaster gives you a really nice meshing design and another layer of texture and structure on top of what you already have. Next is a joint compound or like I used for here is Marmorino. It's a kind of plaster and I used this one just because I didn't want it to dry out. I had it on hand and I didn't want to open another tin. It really doesn't matter. You can use spackle, you can use um, joint compound, plaster, whatever you want. Then take a spatula and go over the um, joint plaster tape that you have put on and it will leave another really nice design on it. I mostly added heavier texture on the upper part of the door around the image. The bottom had enough structure through the paint and the base coat. And this is what it looks like when you take off that joint plaster tape. Gives a really nice design on it. And then I just did that on the top of the door. I didn't do it at the bottom of the door, but only at the top and around the image. I mostly added heavier texture on the upper part of the door around the image because I really wanted my paint and my colors to catch in there. Um, I thought the bottom part had enough structure through the paint from the base coat before. So um, for me that was fine to leave as is. And this is what it looks like on a close-up. You see there's the meshing part, but there's also the spatula part. This was my color choice for the blue tones. I mixed quite a bit and I also added some green that you're not seeing on the plate. The brands are different ones and I just mix them as I need them. I don't worry about if it's this brand or the other brand, I just use what I have on hand and what I want. Now the fun part starts with the blending with all the blues. I also like creating even more structures and designs by using for example a crumbled newspaper. This is some tissue paper I had from wrappings and whilst the paint is still wet just lay down that crumbled up paper and go over it with the roller and that takes off part of the paint which really looks nice. I like that uh, effect that it creates. Best is to spritz a bit with water to water it down a bit, the paint I'm talking about, <laughs> and, uh, and then it's easier to take it off. Sometimes I saw that I did too much water, it was too watery, uh, so I had to go over with paint again, but the effect can be really nice and you don't have to do it on texture, you can do it on a piece of furniture just um, as you would use paint and just do that and crumble over it. You don't need a roller either, you can do it with your hands, but you need quite a bit of paper. This is the effect, you can see that the underneath the base coat is coming through with that technique. Now just continue doing this everywhere. I'm already starting to blend details as well. I'm using some greens there because there was some green from the sea, from the ocean there. So I am really enjoying blending my images. This is what takes most time 
but also very rewarding when in the end you see as if the image was enlarged on the whole door and not just on the inside. So that's really something I love doing. So for the little details, these are more colors that I used. There were some yellows, there was also some red for the berries on the tree. Um, I won't be able to name all these colors. I think you can use anything. You can even use acrylic. You just have to seal it um, to make sure that it doesn't smear. But otherwise, you can use any color that you want. And there are many, many colors for blending. coming together nicely obviously for this lower part you need some neutrals there was also darker greens that I used and it's detail work there is that's all in fact I can I can say I also use cardboard the lines as you can see here to create some lines some grass this is a very helpful tool that you can use and this is the result of the blending of the print. So let's start the bottom of the door. I am using two different neutrals just to give it some depth. There is burlap and there is sandbar and then you mist your bottom of the door a little bit so your paint moves much easier otherwise it will be, you will need a lot of paint especially me because uh, the paint was quite thick and you just apply it any which way crisscross dabbing whatever you would like So I used two different oranges, but I did tone them down a bit with the neutrals I used before, otherwise it would have been extremely, extremely um, bright, which I didn't want. But the orange was kind of in the image, so I thought that would look really nice. Same thing, just mist your door again and then apply 
the orange as you can see it's very very bright so apply again in crisscross in different areas don't cover up everything and then take your water mister take some kitchen towel and dab off the paint again and you can dab as much as you want you can take off the paint as much as you want or as little as you want it really is up to you how you want the final look to be I then applied more neutrals to tone it down so it won't be that bright you can use your paintbrush or you can use a paint spatula to give some design. So I used some greens as well and uh, started applying that in exactly the same way as uh, I did before, like applying it with a paintbrush, then spritzing, damping it and taking it off again. As you have your textures you really have the colors respectively the paint catch in the nooks and crannies and only a little bit will stay on your piece and especially if you put a lot of water well you will take off a lot of that paint if you use little water then there is little paint that you're taking off Once you're happy, then let's get to the next color. This is primer red, which is a bit of a rustic red. And I will apply it with a cardboard, which is another technique that you can use to create a different kind of design at the bottom. <laughs> red everywhere I wanted and then I took a bit of my orange and I toned down the red a little bit because it was becoming extremely prominent and uh, I didn't want it to be that prominent I just wanted to have the see-through peaks of this red showing through in the end and uh, this is why I'm going over it and again spritz and dab to take off the brightness here at least this is what I'm doing I'm applying a bit of brown and a bit of green again to age it even more because I want this door to look very rustic and weathered so I continue layering um, and also using my spatula again and adding more to get the look that I want. I've decided to put a stencil on the door as well. I want a very faded design, a subtle design this is a big stencil from Ossidigo Transfer that I really like. They have several of them that I like. And I am applying this stencil, putting it down on a dry surface before I can start stenciling. When you stencil, it's very important that you take off most of the paint 
and especially if you want a faded design, even more so. But normally take off most of the paint because otherwise you'll have some bleed through and then just dab it on. I took this really big brush, round brush that I have and I just dabbed it on. A bit darker in certain areas, less dark in other areas and all over the door. <laughs> my spatula to apply a bit more paint over the stencil to make it even more faded and uh, my cardboard again to use as to create some grass. I then used high flow acrylics I just squeezed it on wherever I thought it was necessary and that gave it that orangey and a bit of a rusty look that I like very much. And here is the final result of the makeover of the door. It is now hanging on the stone wall of our outside area. I think it looks just gorgeous there. It gives a pop of colour to all the surrounding and uh, I just love it.